reinforce everything with you know big old panels of wood and uh, uh, you know like put leaning pieces up just in case anything happens cover everything with tarps uh, mm -hmm. and then we'll reopen again in the spring and assess any damage that might have happened um, but at the same time you know next to the equator they would never have they, 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 they weren't built degrees. for snow so yeah, right. exactly yeah. so that's right. why we have to make exceptions in that sense but um, what you do see though a lot um, is uh, when these uh, these people are being incorporated into Virginia society in the sense that um, everyone picks up stuff from everyone else, things like the covered front porch, that is something that would be incorporated into European style housing uh, once they get to the colonies because they need a nice cool workspace uh, and uh, a means to kind of circulate air into their houses without um, you know having to worry about the sun getting into your house so much or the sun being on your walls. The uh, more sun on your walls, the hotter your house is. Um, so that's where you see these low hanging doorways and things like that for. Um, uh, so yeah, architecture, food, dance, music, all sorts of um, influences here. Uh, and I, sorry if I'm repeating myself to you guys. Sure, uh, please. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> so um, the uh, reason that we show West Africa and um, southern Nigeria, so the Igbo people in general, is because they make up about 40% of the slave population. That was coming to this area of Virginia. Um, so not just Igbo, we show them in particular as a tribe or as a group of tribes, but um, all encompassing West Africa, you see a lot. Um, so what often would happen with people like these uh, people here is that they would be raided by outside tribes, uh, often tribes coming from, say, the coast. Uh, who had a strong connection with outside trade, so European trade and uh, things like that. So they would be selling not just people, but their goods as well. So things like okra, black-eyed peas, um, sesame peanuts, those things are very, um, very much uh, held in high regard for trade options or objects. Uh, so um, at night when these raids are taking uh, place, they're often going to try to strike more than one uh, society or village or culture at once because um, when they're marching you down, they're going to try to put you next to people who don't speak your language, so there'll be less conspiratorial attempt at escape, things along those lines. Um, they have lots of deterrence, and why you wouldn't want to escape. They would only march them at night. Um, they would purposely take really confusing uh, routes, um, and then you're essentially, there's no such thing as a good slave ship. Um, the worst kind would be one where Maybe you're being sent to somewhere like the Sugar Islands, which is the worst place you want to go because you will literally be worked to death. Uh, they would be packing in as many people as physically possible, and we're talking shoulder to shoulder, uh, just because it's not necessarily so much to do with the um, quality when it comes to that, it's the quantity. So they, they say things like if you lose a fourth of your cargo, that's a risk they're willing to take. Um, but then there are other types of slave ships too that when they're you know transporting more women and children it's said that on some the women and children were allowed to go up on deck but that's a major risk so you probably wouldn't want to do that um, you wouldn't want to be right next to the slave traders that's just kind of asking for danger um, but uh, it's not not comfortable uh, you might not have ever been in a big ship like that before never been on that large of a body of water before so seasickness was common lack of nutrition and then uh, when they come here um, the uh, the um, the people who would be purchasing these slaves it really does depend but most of the time uh, they're being brought over to settle the back country so to clear the land to plant the crops to raise the animals to help build multi-generational homes the thing about this valley in particular not very high the slave population actually not so much like in other areas of um, of Virginia, but here we only show one house that would have incorporated any sort of um, slave, uh, and that would have been a rented slave uh, or servant, and that would have been in our 1850s house. But you don't see nearly as much the um, American farm hmm? that is. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, you don't see nearly as much as you would think, uh, because you always hear a lot about like plantations and tobacco and things like that. This valley didn't produce too much tobacco. It's a little too hard to. Uh, to grow here, so, so this village, what part of Africa? We are showing one singular compound of one family in an Igbo village in southern Nigeria. Um, but when we talk about the slave population, we kind of encompass not just Nigerians, but all of West Africa, that section of the continent. So this is, you said, for one family? Mm -hmm. 
so it would be his three houses. So All four oh, would be for the whole family. Four, so um, okay. it's actually, you walk in the front door, you're walking into your house. So it would be one husband, two wives, and then as many children as possible. It's a fairly patriarchal society here. So you see um, that the men's status symbol relies on how many people he can uh, keep track of and how many people he can raise uh, or marry. So. Uh, an affluent Igbo man could have up to four wives. We just show the two here. Uh, so each wife does get her own living space. The first wife's house is the one that's the farthest over this way. Uh, the second wife's house is this one here. And then the two interior structures are for the men. Uh, so the men would be sleeping in this back one. Boys would leave their mother's house about puberty, and then they would move in with the father until about 16 or so, and then they go off to start their own uh, compound and find a wife. The girls will stay with their mother and, uh, you know, younger brothers and whatnot uh, until about 13 or 14, and that's when they go off and get married. Uh, so, uh, then the very first building you see here, that is called the Obi. It is the greeting space for the men. Uh, so they would make trade in there, play games. We keep our spiritual items in there. Um, the women are probably only ever going in if they're serving a platter of food, um, which would be fairly typical. Uh, so. Um, you see a compound like this one making up one of hundreds that would be a village. So under the leaves would be a village. So mm -hmm. this is not a village in itself, which is a compound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, one of one of many. One family. Groups. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just a, a side a side uh, question. What sure. what is it actually the source of this? Is it sure. leaves of uh, bamboo? Uh, not bamboo, actually palm. It's called palm. palm. It's a palm. Uh -huh. It comes from the leaf, uh, so you strip it when it's green and then you dry it. Uh, so it's good for things like cordage, yeah, yeah, it's yes. very tight, so we can use it for building material. These yeah. are just several types of baskets uh -huh. um, that I've been working on. This one will be about this wide and mm -hmm. then only about this tall because it's more for drying vegetables. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's very, very sturdy, um, but it also can be used to weave mats for uh, bedding, things like that, anything you might need. And it's just one type of of, uh, of uh, basket weaving, they would use bamboo and other types of palm as well. Yeah, yeah. Good. How did they become uh, slaves? Is it traders like it's uh, mm -hmm. it, would, uh, it, it would just the people with uh, guns and come to the village? Sometimes, most what often. I, what, I, what I've heard that uh, they are, uh, the Nigerian uh, authority could just uh, sell uh, their own people uh, to to America. Is it true? Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that so much. What, what you might see most often are neighboring, and not even like next door neighbors, but outside tribes that are speaking a different language are not necessarily farmers or woodworkers like these people are. They're more warring societies who are much more interested in international trade. Uh, so they would be more than likely the ones who would raid villages, kidnap people, march them back down to the ah. coast. Sell them there. Yeah, good neighbors. You could sell, could sell, sell. Yeah. Well, these also could be people that are, you know, from hundreds of miles away. It really, uh, it really. It's not really a neighbor. Theory. Okay, but yeah, anyway. So, so it's kind of local people. Who, uh, local, I mean African people. Local. It's not local. Other Africans, I wouldn't necessarily say like next door neighbors are locals now, because there are just in general two thousand or so different languages spoken in the continent of Africa to begin with. Mm -hmm. So, you could have. Um, uh, it's, so we're in southern Nigeria, you go up to northern uh, Nigeria, there could be no languages in common. You go to the coast, there could be no languages in common there. So it's not that these people are selling themselves, it's that uh, different warring tribes, different, different so cultures they, they are. they kind of, uh, uh, if they don't speak the same language, they kind of... Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's not a... F it's, it's, yeah, yeah, okay. But uh, what... Uh, uh, what 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 did you use for exchange? Money? Um, well, these guys, their form or of goods? currency would be yes, mostly goods. Yeah. Um, so things like uh, baskets, um, oh. foods, yams are actually the most important. Oh. Um, oh. Yes. Yams okay. are a status symbol as well. So oh, because of how hard they are to grow, uh -huh. if you can grow a lot of really good yams, then uh, you're doing something right. So uh -huh. um, they would also trade for goods things like. Um, cloth, uh, so mm -hmm. more like cotton-like cloth. They would be uh, buying that from, or trading that with other, other African cultures, or possibly even the Europeans through uh, other villages. Um, so, uh, you know, when when they are trading, it's more to improve their lives, just like every other nation and every other civilization ever. 
Um, so even too, like when you get to say Native America, they're going to look at more European style like clubs and um, like metal or like cast iron or bronze uh, cooking ware. And they're gonna think, well, that's an improvement. Like, because you know, every single society ever has sought to improve themselves uh, through trade and through um, communication with others. So, uh, okay. Yeah, good. Thank you very yeah, much. Well, sure. Nice lecture. Absolutely. Enjoy the rest of your visit.